Using mass-to-mass -mass stoichiometry, I will prove the identity of the white solid from my sodium bicarbonate decomposition video that is also on my YouTube channel. In this video, I will prove that the white solid that was produced from this chemical change was sodium carbonate. I'm going to use mass-to-mass -mass stoichiometry to do that. I've already calculated the mass of the sodium bicarbonate that I had initially in the test tube that I heated. And then I calculated the mass of my solid product, which I hope to prove was sodium carbonate. So this is called the experimental mass, and I'm not going to use it in any calculation. I'm just going to use it to compare to prove that it, it indeed was sodium carbonate. Before I can do any mass-to-mass -mass stoichiometry calculations, I need a balanced equation. And in fact, in any stoichiometry problem, you need a balanced equation. So I have to write that my sodium bicarbonate solid was my reactant. I then heated it, so you can put a little triangle on top of the arrow, and I produced carbon dioxide gas, which I proved in that video. I produced water, and then I made it into a vapor and heated it off. And then my goal here is to prove that the white solid that was produced was sodium carbonate solid. Now, before I can do any mass-to-mass -mass calculations and stoichiometry, I do need a balanced chemical equation. So not just a chemical equation with correct reactants and products, but a balanced chemical equation. So if I look at, kind of inspect this, I have one sodium on the reactant side and two sodium ions on the product side. In fact, I have, I should say, actually one sodium ion on the reactant side and two sodium ions on the product side. So the first thing I'm going to need to do is I have to put a 2 in front of there as a coefficient. You can even underline it if you'd like. Now what that does is it gives me two sodium ions, two sodium ions. I have two hydrogen atoms that end up in the water molecule. I have two carbon atoms that end up in the carbon dioxide molecule and in the carbonate ion. So that's 1, 2. And then I have 2 times 3, which are 6 oxygens. And they end up, two of them in the carbon dioxide one of them in the water, so that's three, and then three more in what's called the carbonate ion in sodium carbonate. So the last thing I will do is put some ones in, in front of these molecules or particles because they are balanced. All right, so now check off the fact that we have the balanced equation, moving on to the stoichiometry. Now for mass-mass stoichiometry problems, Step one is to have the balanced equation. The next step is to take your mass that you have of your reactant or whatever you're given and turn it into the moles. So I'm gonna take my sodium bicarbonate mass and find out how many moles that was. Typically with chemistry in, the, in a lab setting, we don't use an entire mole of something because it's a fair amount of mass. So how do we know what that is? Well, that's something you're gonna need the periodic table for. So for me to find how many grams are in an entire one mole of sodium bicarbonate, which is just baking soda, I have to look on the periodic table and find those elements. So I have one sodium in this formula, so 23 grams per mole, one hydrogen, or you know, like you'd say, even say one mole of hydrogen, which is one gram per mole, and then carbon, there was one of those, which is right here, and then three oxygen, so you'd have to take three times the 16. When you do that, you get a total of 84, or sorry, or you can use 83.982 if you want to be kind of precise, but around 84. Now, normally I do a stoichiometry problem and I keep going, but what I'm going to do for this first video is I'm just going to stop and actually calculate the moles, which is 0 0.06644, and I'll just carry a little extra sig fig there, um, sodium bicarbonate, which is also just baking soda. So that's the mole amount that I had. The next step on a mass-to-mass -mass stoichiometry problem is to then convert using the mole ratio. And if you've not learned about mole ratio, I have a video on that. If you'd like on my YouTube channel, you can watch. And I need to find then the moles of something else. Well, in this video, again, I'm focusing on that solid white product that I'm trying to prove is sodium carbonate. I gotta be very careful here. So I started with sodium bicarbonate, or sodium hydrogen carbonate, and I want to prove that I produced the solid sodium carbonate as the white solid. So if you look up here on the balanced equation, I'm just going to kind of circle these. That's the mole ratio from 2 to 1. That's the numbers I'm going to use down here. So for every 2 moles of uh, sodium bicarbonate, 
I will produce one mole of sodium carbonate. So all you do is divide by two, so that's pretty easy. And then number unit label, hopefully your teacher uh, does the same thing or professor and gets you to write number unit label. So don't forget to write that it's, you know, 0 0.03322 moles of sodium carbonate. And then the last stop is going back to mass. So then the next thing I need to do is start with 0, I'm just going to zoom in here, 0, line these up, 0 0.03322 moles of sodium carbonate. And it's washing soda. If you ever want to buy it in the store, that's what sodium carbonate is, whereas sodium bicarbonate is baking soda. And what you want to do, again, is get the mass of it. So, again, we did not have an entire mole. We had a very small fraction of a mole. But if we did have an entire mole, what would be the molar mass? So back you go to the periodic table. So make sure you have one of these handy in chemistry, obviously. So it's going to be two sodium or two moles of sodium, so 23 times 2, one carbon, which is 12 grams per mole, and then three oxygens, which is around 16 grams per mole. And you get a grand total for the molar mass of 105.964. Now, again, some people might just use 106 if you're doing this as a quick calculation. But because I'm trying to prove the identity of this solid actually being sodium carbonate, I want as precise molar masses as possible. And if you take the mole amount times 105, I get this fractional you know, amount of a mole by mass, which is 3.52. So um, this is the theoretical um, mass of sodium carbonate I should get, theoretical mass of the product. And what I'm going to do then is go back up. Remember my data, I had 3.52 as the experimental mass. Because again, I weighed my you know, test tube after it was cooled, and I found that it weighed 46.81. If I subtract out the test tube, then my mass of my solid product was 3.52. And then what I did here is I calculated that it was 3.52 by mass, theoretically, starting with the original reactant's mass. So I had a great percent error, which was pretty much zero, and I had 100% yield with no error. But that's why this lab is used a lot, because sodium bicarbonate really produces great data when you decompose it with some heat. Now, just as kind of an extension to this, I'm going to add one more thing. Usually, I don't break these into three steps. But again, if you want to, you know, step one was to write the balanced equation. Then we calculated the moles using molar mass, then used the mole ratio to get the moles, and then again went back to the molar mass of the product to find the mass. Normally, I would write these all in one step. So what I'm going to do down here is show really how mine would look. And the other thing I'm going to do is just switch over to something that maybe some of you have a teacher that uses, um, you know, they use like times in a line like this. It's the same thing. So step one would be, again, taking my, and I'm just going to round this time, 84 grams of sodium bicarbonate for every one mole, just to save some room here of sodium bicarbonate. I'll still do number unit label. It might be a little messy. And then for every two moles off the balanced equation of sodium bicarbonate, so this is my mole ratio, I got one mole of sodium carbonate, just to help those of you where if you have a, you know, an instructor or a teacher or a professor that shows you all in one line, that this is the same thing. We're just not doing what I call a pit stop. We're just going through it and calculating then to mass, which is grams per mole. And again, I will use the really rounded of 106. And then again, when this is all said and done, you get 3.52 grams. I don't think I even have room, so I'll put it down here, grams of sodium carbonate. But that's why sometimes it'd be nice to have your paper kind of landscape so that you'd fit this all on there quite nicely. So don't be shocked if you see, um, see that. And again, I even didn't even fit on here just because this is a video and I don't want people to say, oh, I wrote it wrong. So again, remember this was the mass in grams. I'll actually just do this. This was the mass in grams of sodium carbonate. All right. Well, I hope that helped chemists check out my other videos I have on even limiting excess problems or percent yield, which is commonly the next step after this, which is, you know, how much error, how much yield did you have? All right, I hope this video helped you understand how to do mass to mass stoichiometry problems and how I can use something called sodium bicarbonate, basic old baking soda in your house and prove that chemists can have the identity of a product produced and proven by using stoichiometry.